decided to make a video just to show you how to create a table of values to graph a quadratic relation. Uh, so as an example, let's say that we want to graph uh, this quadratic relation, which is defined by y is equal to x plus 1 squared minus 3. So the first thing, uh, we know that th we have two variables. We have the x variable and the y variable. The x variable is the independent variable. The y variable is the dependent one. Um, and because the x variable is the independent variable, that means that we can choose whatever we want the x to be. Um, so we typically pick numbers that are small and easy to work with. And just by looking at this, and hopefully you got to that part of the lesson, we already know that the vertex will be at negative 1 and negative 3. So this already gives me a bit of a clue that I should pick uh, x coordinates that are very close to negative 1. So I'm purposely going to pick uh, small numbers here. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And I'm running out of space here, so I'm just going to continue on here. Uh, 3, okay? So I apologize for running out of space. I'll just do it over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to calculate. I'm just going to figure out what the y coordinates for each of these will be. Uh, so I'm going to show the work for the first one here. So we have negative three plus one. So we're essentially just taking the x and subbing it into this variable here, and we will square it and then we subtract off three. So just doing a little bit of work, we know that we have to do brackets first. So we have negative three plus one. That gives us negative 2, and then that number is squared, which gives us 4 minus 3, and then of course 4 minus 3 gives us 1. And now for our next uh, variable here, for negative 2, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take negative 2, and we will replace the x with negative 2. So we have negative 2 plus 1, and then we square it, and then we subtract off the 3. That gives us negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1, and negative 1 squared is 1. And then we take away the 3, that gives us a total answer of negative 2. And of course, we continue on, and we're for this one, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take negative 1 plus 1, and we square it, minus 3. This is a bit of a nice one, because we know that negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So 0 minus 3 is just going to give us uh, negative 3. And you might also notice that the vertex negative 1 and negative 3 also comes up in this table value. So that kind of matches up with what we already know about vertex. For our next one, we are going to take uh, the 0 and we're going to sub in the 0 into x. And so we continue this on. And I'm going to go a little faster with this because I'm assuming this is starting to make a bit more sense. So we have 0 plus 1 squared. That's just going to give us 1. And then 1 minus 3, we end up getting a negative 2. And I'm hoping that some of you might notice that negative 2 actually comes up twice here. So we're starting to see a little bit of symmetry here, uh, which is exactly what we want to see when we have parabolas, because parabolas are symmetric. Uh, so I'm going to continue on here. So for the next one, we have y is equal to 1 plus 1 squared. And we take away the 3, and then we continue on with the steps here. So we end up getting 2 squared, which is 4, uh, minus 3, and 4 minus 3 gives us 1. We see a symmetry once more. Uh, we notice that the 1 here and the 1 over here are repeated. You can see that the y values are repeating themselves. And just finishing this table off, I'm going to go a little bit faster. I may not show the steps as much. We have 2 plus 1 squared minus 3 we know that 2 plus 1 is going to give uh, 2 plus 1 is 3 and then that's squared that gives us 9 minus 3 and 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. finally for x is equal to 3 we sub in 3 into x so we have 3 plus 1 and then we will square that and take away 3 so we know that 3 plus 1 is 4 uh, 4 squared is 16 so we have 16 minus 3 and 16 minus 3 gives us a total answer of 13. So if we want to graph this quadratic relation, all we need to do is plot the x and y coordinates together. So as an example, we would plot negative 3 and 1, then we plot negative 2 and negative 2, negative 1 and negative 3, and so on. And we do this for all the coordinates that we have. 
So I won't do this by hand, but I'll, I'll actually show you how to do this uh, using Desmos. So we go to Desmos over here. I'm going to click on this plus sign here and I'm going to select table. When you go to table, all you need to do is just insert what the X coordinates are and what the Y coordinates are. So for the first pair of coordinates, we have negative three and one. For the second pair of coordinates, we have negative two and negative two. Then we have negative one and negative three. And then we have zero and negative two. And this is where our Y coordinates start repeating. Then we have one paired up with one. And finally, the last two pair of coordinates, we have two and six and three and 13. Now, if you can't see all the coordinates, in this case, you cannot. You can always zoom out, just press this right here, and you can zoom out and see all the different coordinates on there. And of course, if you're doing this by hand, all I want you to do is just draw a curve that goes through them. But in this case, because I'm using technology, I am actually going to be using the regression curve that we learned about. Uh, so what I can do is write Y1, and I put a little swiggly line, it basically means approximating, and I'm gonna write AX1 squared plus BX1 plus C. So if I type that in, uh, Desmos will automatically draw the curve at best fit for me. So there is my graph.